Now ZW CAD is a faster and lot cheaper alternative to AutoCAD and its biggest strength is its familiar user interface and commands that look and work like AutoCAD. Now they have released a new version of 2024 with great new features and updates and here in this video I'll share with you my six selected new features of ZW CAD. Now these features are flexi block, point cloud integration, hardware acceleration, area table, quick properties panel, DG and underlays. So with that, let's get started. So the first feature that we'll be looking at is the flexi block. Now think of it as dynamic blocks of AutoCAD. If you are familiar with dynamic block, well, then this is how it looks like. I've got this door, which is basically a flexi block in ZWCAD. And if I select this, well, it will look like this. Now it's again the same kind of thing that we call dynamic block in AutoCAD, which has extra functionality. So rather than just being a simple standalone block here, it has functions like it can change the size using this grip. Using this grip, you can change the open angle. You can also flip it using this and also you can flip it using this arrow. Not only that, you can change the wall thickness using this one and you can even align it with respect to any line using this one. For example, if I move it and move it closer to this one, there it is. It's going to align with respect to this line. So that's the flexi block, which is now available in ZWCAD and you can even make your own. So let me show you the steps of making a flexi block. So I'll delete this one and now I have a very simple object here. It's made with line, polyline and a circle. So just a simple object, it's not yet a block. Now I'll go to this insert tab and right here we have this create option. Just go to this and select create. Now give it a name. So I'll call it sync dash flexi. All right, if you want to add a description, that'll go here, but I'll leave it blank. Now I'll select this option, pick a base point, and maybe I'll select this one as the base point. Now here, make sure convert to block is selected and click on this option. Then select everything and enter. Now here, leave the default option except for this one, which is open in block editor. Make sure this is checked because when it is checked, ZWCAD will automatically open block editor where we want to modify this block. So now I'll click OK and there we are. It is open in the block editor environment where we have the flexi block options. Now, what do we want with this block? Well, usually when this is a standalone sync, it's not going to do much. And if you want to change the size, then you may need to just explode the block, stretch it or maybe change the overall scale. But now using flexi block, I will add some features. For example, I just want to increase the length of this sync based on our requirement. So that's the first feature that I'll add here. For that, I'll go to linear and I'll select this linear parameter and I'll click on this point and this point and I'll add it right here. Now, after the parameter, we need to add the action, which is right here. So let's go to action and the action will be stretch. Now, why stretch? Well, because using a stretch, we can increase the length of this block and that's why stretch. So select the parameter as you can see follow the command line here is the parameter select it now specify the point well we want to associate it with this left point so select the left point and done now specify the first corner of a stretch frame now make a stretch frame as if you are stretching this block so now i'll click here and then i'll make the frame like this so it's as if i'm stretching this in this direction now you just need to select the object so just select everything and press enter there we are, we are done. All we need to do is just add this stretch action. So maybe I'll just add it right about here. Okay, so for this side it is done, but we'll add it on this side as well so that we can stretch it on both the sides. So I'll just go to stretch action, go to stretch again, select the parameter and repeat the process, but for the right side. So I'll go to this right side point, then I'll make this stretch frame on the right side, and then I'll select everything, including this stretch parameter and then press enter and place it right about here and we are done. So the exclamation is gone and now it should work exactly the way we want. So let's go to close block editor, save the changes and let's test it out. So I'll select it. Let's move it. And yes, it is stretching in this direction as well as this. But there is a problem. 
this drain is exactly at the center in the original block but not here so we just need to ensure that this remains exactly at the center for that you can make more modifications in the block so let's select this again right click and go to block editor and i'll make a few modifications in this parameter so i'll select the parameter right click and properties now the first thing is the location of base point so the base point is right here in the miscellaneous panel it's a starting point change to mid and now here is the base point so if you stretch it in this direction it will now stretch equally in the opposite one so keeping this drain exactly at the center okay that's done another thing is this parameter we are currently able to stretch this equally in both the sides and that's not usually how sync or any other standard block should behave usually sync and other fixtures have a standard sizes and if you want to add those standard sizes you can do that using this value set option so in the value set we have distance type select increment or list with list you can specify your list of sizes with increment you can add an increment value for example here i'll go to increment and i'll add 80 or maybe even 100 as increment value press tab key close the properties now close the block editor save the changes and let's check it so if i select this now and if i stretch it well as expected it's now keeping the drain centered and it's equally stretching on both the sides not only that we now see these lines these parallel lines are at 100 increment value so it's now only going to stretch by 100 unit increments so that's how it's going to work and that's the flexi block now there is one more advantage of flexi block and that's is easy translation from autocad to zwcad which means if you have a dynamic block which is created in AutoCAD, you can bring it here in ZWCAD and very easily you can use it. Let me show you how it works. For that, I'll use Design Center. So I'll press Control 2, and when you do that, it's going to open this Design Center. And here I have already created a dynamic block in AutoCAD which I'll be using now. So I've got this folder. So just go to this folder, and here I have ZWCAD video folder where I have this AutoCAD dynamic block window. So I'll select this drawing and inside this drawing we have the window dynamic block. So I'll select open. That's going to open this. Let's go to blocks because we want to extract block from the drawing. Double click it and here is the block. Now let's drag it and drop it here. Okay. And let's test it out. So after inserting it, if you select, you can see that clearly we have these grips and they are translated very easily into ZWCAD and you don't need to make any kind of adjustments it will work right out of the box. Now the next great feature is working with point clouds. Now the point cloud is the scan data that you can create using 3D scanners or maybe LiDAR scanners and uh, you can import models of buildings, objects and other things in your drawing using this scan data. Now usually RCP and RCS are the popular formats, but there are several other formats which are supported in ZWCAD. So let me show you how you can import point cloud now and you can also work with it. Now to do that, I'll go to this insert tab right here. And here we have this point cloud panel. Now select this point cloud attach and I already have a point cloud file, which is this E57 file here. Now, I'll select this file and click open. Now, in this case, the file will open kind of like this immediately. But when you do that for the very first time, ZWCAD will convert it into a readable format and it's going to take some time. The file size may change as well. And that happens only for the very first time. So now with that, click OK. And here we are, the point cloud data is added. Now using this point cloud data, well, you can visualize this actual architectural building. Now, when you select the point cloud, it's going to show a bounding box inside which this object will show up. You can obviously hide this bounding box if you want using this option. So you can select always off and the bounding box won't display. You can select always on if you want to show it even when the object or the point cloud is not selected. But I'd like to keep it on only when the point cloud data is selected. So I'll select this option, the default one. Now let's start by cropping this. So I'll select the point cloud and here we have the cropping panel where you can crop it using three options, rectangular, polygonal or circular. 
these are basically the geometrical shape that you can make to crop it. So I'll first go to this top view from here. And now I would like to crop only this top part. I want to show the top part and I don't want the bottom part of this. So select the point cloud, go to rectangular, or if you want polygonal or circular, you can use that. And I'll just make a box like this and everything inside the box will show up by default. If however, you want to show the objects which are outside, then simply select outside option. Right now you can see that inside is a default. So you can type O, enter, and that's gonna show objects outside, but I'll press enter to accept the default value. And there we are, we have got the cropping. If you want to remove the cropping, well, just go to uncrop all and we are back to normal. Now, currently this drawing is visible with the minimum details. So if you want to increase the number of dots that we see here, the number of points here, then just go to the slider and move it towards right side. And as you can see, as we move it towards right, well, the level of detail is increasing. Also, you can change the point size, which is set to two, and you can make it larger, kind of like this, which immediately it starts to look like an oil painting or of sorts, but it's obviously not. It's just increasing the size of points which is creating this cloud data. So I'll just keep it at default of two and also level of detail, I'll leave it at zero. You can also change the transparency if you wanna make it transparent like this and I'll again leave it at zero. Now currently it's showing this scan with its original color. So that scan color is option, that's the selected one. But if you want, you can change it to object color or normal to see it in different visual styles. For example, here is the object color and this is the normal one. Of course, I'd like to change it to scan colors now. Okay, now, what if we want to see the interiors of this? For that, the best method would be to just create a section plane. Let's do that. Now, the section plane option is right here. Go to section plane and I'll make it using the top plane because the top plane will cut it, revealing the things which are inside. So I'll go to top. And there we are. So we have a section plane which is added. Now, if you are satisfied with the location where it is added, that's fine. If not, you can select the section plane and using this grip, you can move it up or even down. So if it is not working properly here, just move your cursor outside slightly and that will give you more room to work with it and it will also work quite smoothly. So in this case, maybe I will just move it. Let me just zoom in a bit and I'll move it like that. Okay, now we can see the rooms much more clearly and we have this. Now, not only that, once you have the section plane, you can use it to create the boundaries. For example, we have the walls here, as you can see. And if you want to extract that wall data, well, you can now do that. Let's do it. So I'll select the point cloud and I'll select this option, section line extraction. And that's going to extract all of these section lines. Now, you can select the entire cross section, the outside as well as inside, or you can only select the perimeter if you want the outside section lines. You can also select the minimum length of sectioning line and the smallest line will be of this length, whatever the unit which you are using. Also, this is the gap after which the lines will connect into one. And this is the angle up to which ZW CAD will consider lines as collinear. So even if it's under five degrees, it will just make the lines collinear. You can change the color of your section lines using this option. So maybe I'll just select red for this because we already have slightly greenish color here. So it will pop out the lines and also you can select line or maybe 2D polyline if you want. So now I want the objects or the boundaries to be made with lines. So I'll just select line. If however you are selecting polyline, you can select its width here. All right. So with that, I'll select create. And before I do that, here is a layer option. So if you have created a new layer, you can put it directly on it using this option. I'll leave it at default, which will put it on zero layer. So create and we are done. So here we have the lines that are created. Now you can use these lines while well, to create your drawing. And if you want to hide this point cloud data now, you can do that using this option, show point cloud, uncheck and it's hidden. Not only that, you can also, let me just move it back to the original and uh, now I'll go to this point cloud manager here. You can also hide it, select it. It's going to show the point cloud, which we have. You can uncheck this to hide it. Now, currently we have just one point cloud, but if you have several, it's going to show up. So all the point clouds in a drawing will show up and you can selectively show or hide the point clouds that you don't want. So that's the point cloud feature. All right, so the next feature is hardware acceleration. 
Now, ZWCAD is a processor intensive program, which means it relies heavily on your processor for all the computing. So all the display related settings like anti-aliasing, showing the visual styles and all the drawings is currently processed by your CPU. If you want to offload those processes, well, you can do that using hardware acceleration and send it to your graphics card. Now, the hardware acceleration option is right here. You can click here to open the hardware acceleration option, which is right here, or you can right click, go to options and from here, go to display and graphics hardware setting. There it is. So either method is just fine. I'm going to click here and now you can see that currently I'm using NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080. That's the graphics card which I'm using and the OpenGL version is 4.6.0. Now my hardware acceleration mode is on for 2D display. And also there are some other settings. For example, I've activated smooth line display and also text is anti-aliased, which means text will display very smooth. And you can also select how much you want to use your graphics card. So currently I'm using its maximum capacity. You can just send it to, well, mid range, or you can just toggle it down to the lowest capacity. I'll keep it at the maximum one so that it uses the maximum capacity of our graphics card freeing up more space in our CPU. Now with hardware acceleration on and also these options checked anti aliased display for text and smooth line display checked. Well, this is the display that we'll get. I'll click OK and I'll make simple lines. So here we are. We've got the line and at first glance, it may not look like much. As you can see, it's just simple line. But now let's go to hardware acceleration and deactivate this and also deactivate these options. OK, now that's just not it. After deactivating it, you can also degrade the panning and zooming quality right now. It's not, but you can just move it up to just degrade it even further. Now, why do you want to deliberately do that? Well, this is to improve the performance. The visual aspect won't look good. Its display will degrade, but eventually the performance of your drawing will improve. Panning, zooming will be very much snappier. So this is usually helpful if you are working with limited hardware resources. Now with that, I'm going to click OK and suddenly you'll notice this. These lines look very jagged. Now it may not look very clean here on the video, but if you try it yourself, now it looks like the line is there and then another one is starting right underneath it and so on. So that's because of this hardware acceleration. So I'll go back to this. I'll activate this and this. Maybe I'll just move it back or maybe I'll just activate hardware acceleration completely. With that, we have smooth line. Now the same will happen for 2D or 3D models. If you are working with 2D or 3D models and if you deactivate your hardware acceleration and then if you activate it back again and try it, you'll see a significant difference, especially when you are working with limited hardware resources. Now, another great feature is area table, which is available on this annotate tab. Using area table, you can basically create a table of different areas and you just don't need to do it manually. ZWCAD will generate this table for you quite automatically. Let me show you with this example. So I've got this floor plan with several different things. I'm going to hide some of the objects that we don't need for this example. So I'll go to this layer properties and I'm going to hide the blocks and also the door so that we have relatively clean drawing here. Also, if required, you can hide the text and the dimensions just to make it even more clearer. So I'll just hide it all. So we have the bare bones here. OK, now that we have this, let's create an area table. And for that, I'll go to annotate and I'll select area table. Now in the area table, this may not look like the table for you. And if it looks like this, well, you can click here to expand it. So I'm just going to expand it just to show all the options that we have available here. Now you can select simple point just to select the area or you can select the objects in which case you should have a polyline or another object or you can draw a region to create the area. Now I'll quickly draw a table which will show area of different regions in this floor plan. And for that, I'm going to start with the unit. So the unit which we are using here is inches. As you can see, inches is the unit. So I'll make sure that the unit that is used for this area table is also inches, which is a square inch, of course, for the area. So in the convert from and convert to, I'll select square inches. Also, the ratio is, of course, one is to one. And I don't want to scale it up or down. So I'll leave the scale factor at one. Now, you can also select a start number and also 
a prefix or suffix for automatically renaming the areas. If you don't want it, you can select input name and then ZWCAD will prompt you to add name of different areas manually. I don't want to do that, so I'll select auto name and I'll select the start number as one and then I'll select the number suffix as dash room so that the name will look like one dash room, two dash room and so on. Now, what do you want to show in the table? Well, you can select it from here. So you can select only the dimension name, you can select that area or you can select both. I want both, so I'll leave it selected. Also, we have the text setting where you can select the style. So I'll select a standard style and also you can select the text height and where do you want to place your text. And currently we have selected current viewport, which means everything from this viewport will be selected for creating the area, well, area table. Now here in the table settings, you can change the style of your table. So you can select the generate table. If it is not checked, just select it and all the other options will show up. And you can check this option, calculate some area just to show the total area of all the different rooms. Also, you can select the table style and the title text, the first header and the second header. So these are the table column names. You can change it here if you want. If you want to export your table as an external file, you can check this option and specify a location where you'd like this table to show. So in this case, I'll just select maybe desktop and here I'll select sample floor plan as the name and with that, I'll save it. Okay, so with these settings, we are ready to create our area table. Now, let's click OK and place our table. So I'll just place our table right about here. And as you can see, it is completely empty with the name and area only. Some area is zero. That's totally fine. Now start clicking in the different areas. So I'll just select this one. That's our first area, then second area, third area, fourth area. And you can see that now the table is populating and it's automatically adding the name as one dash room, two dash room and so on. Also, the sum area will show total area of all these four rooms. Now I've also got this room and all these other rooms that I'm going to include in my area calculation. And once we are done with this, simply press enter to exit out of this. And we also have this Excel because we selected that export option. So we have the same table here in the CSV format that we can use. And I'll just close it. Let's look at this one. So here we have all of these rooms and the areas are also displayed here, of course, in the square inch unit, which we selected by default. So that's how you can use this area table tool. Now the next feature is quick properties. So you can activate quick properties using QP mode system variable. So if you type QP mode and press enter, you'll get minus one as the default value. You can change it to one or two to activate quick properties. I'll type one and press enter. And now we can use quick properties. So basically if I select an object, it's going to show its quick properties or the most important properties you can say and you can modify these properties from here for example it's set to 180 degree the rotation angle of this block i can change it to let's say 90 press tab key and there we are it's just 90 degrees so i'll change it back to 180 because that doesn't make sense and in a similar way you can select other objects for example this one and now it's going to show the properties of this line and you can modify it from here you can select the text and make the modification of the text now, in this case, if you don't see the properties that you are looking for, then you can add it as well in this quick properties. For example, in this case, I'll just select this line. And as you can see, I only have color, layer and length. I don't have line weight, the transparency and all these things. Let's add it in the quick properties. For that, I'll go to the CUI option right here, the customize option. And now here it's going to show the quick properties. And here, right here in the general option, we have only two properties selected. So color and layer. Of course, in this case, we do want to activate the line type scale. If you want to, you can activate that as well. Line type, you can activate the transparency and maybe I'll just activate line weight as well. Now, it's no longer a quick property. It's a longer list, but that's totally fine. Also, you can see in the geometry, the length is selected. Let's say we want angle as well. You can check that with that click OK. And now we have a much more comprehensive quick property. So if I select this, now the list is longer with all of these properties that we can modify, for example, in this case, the transparency is set to by layer. Let's just make it 80. And there we are. Now the transparency has changed here for this line. So that's how you can modify it. Now, if you want to make it look like the default one, you can go to the CUI option once again after selecting it and uncheck the options that you don't need. So in this case, I'll just uncheck these options, click OK, and we are once again back to normal. So if I now select it, it's going to show only the properties that it was showing initially.
Now, another great feature which is added finally in ZWCAD is the DGN file support. So now you can insert DGN files as XREFs or also as native DWG files. Well, let me show you how it works. So I'll go to insert and right here we have the DGN underlay option which will basically let you insert your DGN files as XREFs. You can also go to this XREF option and from this drop down you can select attach DGN which is the same option and you can attach DGN using this. So I'll just go to this DGN underlay and here I have this house plan DGN file which I'll select. I'll click open and just click OK and the DGN file is added. Let's click on the insertion point and the default scale factor I'll press enter and it's added. So here we have the DGN file which is added as an XREF. So if you now go to this XREF option you can see that it is added here as a XREF. Not only that if you select the external reference here which is the DGN file you'll see this DGN underlay option which can be used to even modify it further. For example you can change the contrast of this file, you can change the fading value which is kind of like the transparency value and also you can display it in monochrome. As you can see the pillars are shown in red but if you don't want to show it in red you can select this display in monochrome and now everything is black and white. Well I'll select it and uncheck this option. Now let's say we only want to see this part of the drawing and we want to hide everything else. For that we can create the clipping boundary. I'll select it, I'll make a rectangular box here or you can even use polygonal or other clipping boundaries. In this case I will select rectangular so rectangular is selected, I'll press enter I'll make the box and there we are. So everything inside the box will show up, everything outside will hide. You can click this arrow to reverse the direction of view. So everything outside will show up, everything inside will hide. Well, I'll leave it like this. Now, if you want to delete the clipping boundary, you can just select this and we are back to normal. Now, currently this drawing is shown as an underlay. If you want to hide it, well, you can select this show underlay and now it's not going to show the underlay object. Of course, we do want to show it, so I'll just activate it. Also, the snapping is on, which means if you want, you can go to your commands and you can actually snap to these points like midpoint and all these other points. Actually, you know what? In this case, the snapping is deactivated. So let's just activate it first. So I'll select it and I'll activate the snapping and now let's try it again. So here we are, we've got the end point, end point, midpoint and so on. So the snapping is on. Now if you select it and deactivate the snapping, well you know that it's not going to snap anymore. Also, if you want to now go to external reference palette, well here it is. Or if you want to modify the layer of this file, just select this and we have the layers of this DGN file. Now finally, if you want to import this file as the native DWG file, then you can select import as objects or you can go to insert and select this DGN import, which is basically the same option. But in this case, I'll select this file and select import as objects and it will give you this prompt. Do you want to insert the currently selected DGN underlay? Well, yes. And select OK with the default options and we are done. So this is now imported as native file. So as you can see, this is native file added right inside ZWCAD. So now you know how DGN files can be imported in ZWCAD. So that was the list of new ZWCAD or ZWCAD features. Let me know which feature you like the best in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.